and we welcome those who are visiting with us through the instrument of YouTube. I'm Pastor Davenport, pastor of Lansing Christian Center Church located at 5640 South Waverly Road, Lansing, Michigan. Our mailing address is Post Office Box 27413, Lansing, Michigan 48909. Prayer team, the prayer ministry meets on first and third Sunday of the month, excuse me, Friday of the month. And if you need someone to be in agreement with you in prayer, you can call this number, 517-646-8077, at noon Eastern Time. Your request will be received, given to the prayer team, and prayer will be offered to you, for you, and with you. Amen. And the word of the Lord tells us that the effective prayer of a righteous man avails much. How many righteous people are in here this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Thank God for this cold morning. Amen. Amen. Yeah, it is cold. Aren't you glad that you're not in some of the places where the trees are falling from the frozen ice? Praise the Lord. Places where it's usually warm this time of the year are experiencing a hard freeze in Memphis, Tennessee, and yeah. some other places, places where they very seldom have a, have a snow. But, uh, amen, maybe they backslid. <laughs> I'm just kidding you, praise the Lord, but we thank God for his goodness this morning. Amen. Uh, Taking up from where we left off from last Sunday's message, we want to continue our study on who is responsible for me being blessed. And we want to focus upon these two words this morning, blessed, that God spoke to Abraham. And I notice, if you would turn with me to Galatians, you will notice that Paul left off half of that statement that God made to Abraham. He said to Abraham, in you all the, all the families of the earth will be blessed. But prior to that, he said, I will bless them who bless you and curse him who curses you. Paul left that out. And he left it out for a purpose. Amen. He wanted, he wanted us to focus upon the last half of that statement because that, that statement is going to impact the person who receives it very, very greatly. Amen. So let's look at Galatians 3 and I'm going to go back uh, after this. Amen. And start over again in this second part. Amen. Of this message. Galatians 3 8. And see and the scripture seeing beforehand, forehand, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you, in you, all the nations shall be blessed. And as we found out in this in our study, that word blessed is uh, has a prefix on it, and that prefix is in. The emphasis is not on. The emphasis is not on somebody invoking blessings upon you. The emphasis is, is that you are blessing yourself. Amen. Amen. And I think that 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 we have missed that the body of Christ has missed that in waiting for God to bless them. Most people are still in the waiting mode. We're no longer in the waiting mode. Everything, every, I, I think about this, 
<clears throat> Abraham's, Abraham's obedience, Abraham's obedience opened the door for the Lord Jesus Christ to come. And you notice what he said, in you, in your seed, singular, not seeds. In your seeds, all the nations would bless, or all the nations would bless themselves. Now, what was the promise that God made to Abraham? The promise to Abraham was not abundant financial riches. <laughs> the promise of God to Abraham was the coming of the Holy Spirit. And prior to the Holy Spirit coming, someone else had to come. Someone had to come to make it possible for the Holy Spirit to come. And the one who made it possible for the Holy Spirit to come was Jesus. Because something had to take place in the realm of the Spirit, <coughs> excuse me, for the Holy Spirit to come. Amen. Now, I want you to, the Holy Spirit dropped this in my heart this week. And he said, what you are in the Spirit supersedes what you are in the flesh. What you are in the spirit supersedes what you are in the flesh. What you are in the spirit is eternal, but what you are in the flesh is temporary. Every, every natural thing you see, I mean every, that's an all-inclusive statement. There is, so to speak, nothing permanent in this natural realm, nothing. It's changing. Some of it is decaying. Have you realized this, that if God's word fail, if God's word fail, every natural thing dissolves and disintegrates. He holds all things together by the word of his power. And Jesus came, first of all, to reveal who he was and reveal the Father to his pre contemporaries. And I think about when Jesus fed the 5,000. You read that several times. He fed two different groups of people, 4,000 and 5,000. He fed the 5,000 first, and he fed the 4,000 next. He took that little boy's lunch. Now, that little boy's lunch was supposed to last him all day. Two small fishes, two, not big fish, two small fish and five loaves of bread. That was supposed to last him all day because they were going to be out there with Jesus all day. And in John's account of this, at the end of the day, some of the disciples said to him, send the crowd away so they could go into the towns, you know, and get food and find lodging. You know, evidently they weren't local people. Because if they were local people, then they could have gone back home, you know, and gotten food. But they weren't local people. Some of those folk had come from a great distance. And it's possible that that little boy was a part of that group that came from a, local di a, a long distance. So Jesus said to them, how many loaves do we have? What do we have? They said, we got, there's a lad here with five little beds, two fish, but what is that among so many? Jesus got permission from that boy, and he took that little boy's lunch. Now, I want you to notice this. The scripture says he took that bread and broke it, took the fish and broke it. He gave it to the disciples. Now, he had 12 disciples. How big a piece do you think a fish was given to those 12 men? How big a piece of bread was given to those 12 guys? He broke it and gave it to the disciples and told them to have the group to sit down in groups of 50. The one translation says groups of hundreds and fifties. Those disciples took that little piece of fish, each one of them took that little piece of fish, and that however big the piece of bread was, and they broke it. The miracle, so to speak, was not so much in Jesus breaking it. The miracles was in the disciples. When they began to break the fish, they couldn't miss it. They couldn't miss the portion that they broke. So let's say each one of them gave 50 people a 
enough bread from that little piece they had to satisfy that 50 group. And they fed those people with the little piece of bread and fish that they had until 5,000 people plus was satisfied. And 12 baskets Amen. was left over. If you, if you want to hear anything, if you want to get anything, you want to get the word of God. Amen. See, we look over that. We, we just read that he fed 5,000. <laughs> but think about that. That was an awesome. And when the people saw what Jesus had done, they said, oh, yeah, this is the Christ. <laughs> they wanted to make him king. Yeah. Why? He can feed us. <laughs> Tell us about a Jesus is awesome. Jesus is awesome. What was he proving in that? He was proving who he was. He was proving that he was Israel's provider. He was proving that he could take care of the people. And I, 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 I dare you to stand up in the presence of God and say he can't supply my need. How dare you? You know, we shouldn't be afraid of anything. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Now, Jesus has come and done his part and put the ball in our hand. What are you doing with it? What are you doing with what he's given you? Let's look at, let's, let's, let's look at this again. Galatians 3, 8. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, in you, in you, because of you, all nations will bless themselves. But you see, if you don't know that you have the ability to bless yourself, then you'd be looking for somebody else to do it. Amen. Don't wait for somebody else. That's right. Get a hold of what you, what's yours That's right. and act like you are who you are. Now, let's, let's go back and, <coughs> excuse me, and, and visit Abraham a little bit here. God, God changed Abram's name from Abram to Abraham. See, he had to change his name. He had to give him another identity. See, that's what it is. Y your name identifies you. And your name speaks several things about you. Your name tells of your character. That is Old Testament. Biblical, your name tells of your character. And it also means reputation. And reputation really means, reputation is different from character. Reputation is really what people think about you. But that may not be what you really are. You know, sometimes we, we put a lot of high accolades on people and we don't really know them. And we, listen, let me say this to you. Be careful about how you talk about how good people are that you really don't know. And in church sittings, we are famous for doing that. Don't say no more about people in the church than what you really know. <laughs> Amen. Because a lot of times we, we, we talk about this, how good this person is, and that person may be one of the worst things at home. See, you are at home what you are. That's the real you. The real you is not here or any place else in public. The real you is what you are at home. And what kind of person are you at home? <laughs> when people start bragging on the pastor, one person said, one preacher said, when people start bragging on the pastor, I look at his wife. 
Because he may be one thing in the pulpit, yeah. and he may be something else at home. Beating his wife, abusing the children. Oh, come on now. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. See, we, we, we are famous for putting on the front. We are famous for pretending. We are famous for having a, a false appearance of meekness. When I say we, I'm talking about people. I'm not talking about any individual. But you see, this is one of the reasons why God never says anything about people that he doesn't know. And have you, have you noticed, have you noticed, <laughs> have you noticed that when Jesus was raised from the dead, he never said anything about the folks that crucified him. Not one word. Never mention them. Hallelujah. Why? It was dead stuff. It was dead works. But we keep stuff alive that's dead. All right now. So God gave Abraham, gave him, God gave him a new identity. And listen. When we got born again, we got a new identity. Amen. We are in this world, but not of it. As Jesus said, I'm in this world, but not of it. And we are not, and he said that also about the disciples, but they are not of the world. Just said, I'm not of the world. We are in this world, but not of it. Amen. We're not bound. We're not tied to his principles and his culture. We, as the people of God, need to be manifesting the culture of heaven. Glory to Jesus. God made Abram the father of many nations. God made Abram the father of many nations because he, could, he did that at the time when in, in, in Abram's and Sarah's life when they could no longer bear children. Abram was 99 years old. As a matter of fact, Abram was 100. Sarah was 99 when Isaac was born. So God turned, so to speak, the time clock back and made them, uh, gave them the ability to, to produce children. And when God told Abraham after Ishmael was born, he said, you, you know, you're going to have a son. He, said, he laughed. And Sarah laughed at the same time. You may, am I going to have pleasure now that I'm old? Besides that, I've never been pregnant. I'm sterile. But you see, nothing is impossible with God. Now listen, now that don't mean you can come to God and give him some ideas. <laughs> you see, because when we say, when we hear that, we say, well, I can come to God and tell God, oh, this is my idea. This is what I want God to do. And, and he'll do it because nothing is impossible with God. No, nothing is impossible with God concerning what he's saying. The scriptures, the scriptures, the people in the scriptures, the folk who were successful are the people who did God's will. Amen. The 11th chapter of Hebrews talks about, the, we call that the great chapter of faith. It says, by faith, this person did that. By faith, this person did that. By faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. And then they say, without faith, it's impossible to please God. A lot of people think, because a lot of people think their idea of faith of what God, uh, what they want God to do is what God does. And people say, well, I'm going to believe God for this <laughs> without him saying it. I'm going to believe, like I had one time, uh, a couple wanted to get married. They was out of state. And uh, they called me. They had been members at, at one time. And uh, they called me and asked that. Uh, well, as a matter of fact, what they did, they called one of the other ministers who were here at that time uh, if they would do the wedding. 
And they said, yeah. And you know, they were going to have to come here to get the wedding performed. And this preacher told them, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to believe God that you'll get a special flight, a cheap flight to come from where you are to Lansing to get married. And the bridegroom said, we don't want him doing our wedding. Now that sounded like a statement of faith. But that wasn't a statement of faith because God didn't say, I'll give you a special rate. Right. God doesn't do what you say. God does what he say. Right. <laughs> Why? Because God has already planned the things out from eternity past. Before the foundation of the world, he has already planned it out. Now, you're going to come in here in 2022 and give him some other ideas? This is where we falter when it comes to faith and believing God. We try to conjure up something to get God to put a stamp on, approval on. You don't need to put no approval on your ideas. We're trying to get God to bless our program. <laughs> when Jesus came to this planet, he said, I've come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do your will, O God. Jesus didn't do one thing that he decided to do on his own right. other than what God willed for him to do. He never did anything that he wanted to do personally. Everything he did was the Father's will. Every word that he spoke, God told him to say it. Everything he did, God told him to do it. Everything. He never did anything other than what God wanted him to do. He never said anything. Did he have thoughts? Absolutely. How do I know he had thoughts? Because the scripture says he was tempted as we are. And you are tempted in your thinking. He had thoughts against what he knew the will of God was. And he put them aside. Amen. And the enemy tried to trick Jesus and use the scripture. Right, out to, right at the beginning, tried to trick Jesus and use the scripture to get him to act and traitor to the will of God. If you, the son of God... Command this stone to be made bread. If you're the son of God, cast yourself down. For it is written. It is, oh, now, see, if it's written, now, I'm, I know I got him now. Because it's written, and Jesus is, a, Jesus is a stickler for the word of God. It's written. He should give his angels charge over you to keep you. Unless you dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said, it's written. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And then he put the devil in his place. Oh, come on. I don't think we're putting him in his place. Why did he put him? Behind him. In other words, get out of my face. Don't be talking in my face. Like I used to hear this program years ago on the radio. And this guy would say, excuse me for talking in your face. <laughs> get out of, you don't have no right. Listen, Satan have no right to get in his face. We are the only one. Ah, glory to Jesus. We are the only one that can stand and look him eye to eye. And talk to him on a personal basis. Glory to Jesus. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at Genesis 17. God is saying to Abraham, says, no longer, no longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. Abram means exalted or high father. Abraham means father of a multitude, a father of many nations. 
And you notice what God says in that verse. He said, I have made you. Amen. In other words, I've given you the ability to father many nations. You can't do it. You know, when you feel like, you, when you feel like you're capable, you're not capable as far as God is concerned. Right. You notice when God called Abram, he was 75? And he was still capable of fathering a child. Because Isaac was born within, the, within those 75th and 86 years of age. He fathered Ishmael. But now when he was 100, the flame was gone. Amen. <laughs> he could no longer father. He could no longer father a child. And Sarah couldn't have a child. And then God had the nerve to tell him, I have made you the father of many nations. <laughs> if God, listen, if God says it, it's done. Ooh. Oh, glory. I hope you're getting the picture. If God says you're blessed, don't you say anything contrary. Yeah, but pastor, you don't know how bad things is. I don't care how bad things are. They can't get too bad. But you see, what, I'm, what I want us to see is that we face our and accept our responsibility to do what God has made provision for us to do. God has given us the ability to bless ourselves because he has given us his blessed word, his blessed Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And he set us down in the kingdom that rules over everything. Amen. Glory to Jesus. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham, for I have made you the father of many nations. See, God wanted them to think. He wanted them to think in, in, in the way that he thought of them. God wants you to think like of yourself the way he thinks of you. Hallelujah. Excuse me for saying this but not some famous TV icon. He don't want you thinking of yourself like some famous TV icon thinks of you. He doesn't know, he doesn't know enough about you. Amen. He doesn't even want you to think of yourself the way your doctor think of you. Amen. Because your doctor only knows, um, he only knows of you as much as you tell him. That's one of the reasons why when you go to the doctor, if you don't talk to him, he can't treat you. You got to tell him what you feel. You got to tell him where your pain is. Maybe you need to tell him the degree of the pain that you feel. They have these smiley faces on the wall. And they say, well, well, what is the range of your pain? Is it down here at the low end or is it at the high end? Is it somewhere in the middle? And then they get an idea as to what strength of medication to prescribe for you. They don't know. They don't know any more than you tell him. But ain't nothing you can tell God about yourself that he doesn't know. Amen. You have such men known me. David said that way back yonder. You have such men known me. You comprehend my path, my lying down. You're acquainted with all of my ways. There's not a word on my tongue, but behold, O oh Lord, you know it all together. You hear me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. I can't attain to that. Then he goes on and says, Why can I flee from your presence? <laughs> I can't get away from you. You can't get away from God. When you get there, he's already been there and gone. Oh, <laughs> glory to God. God wanted them to think. See, that's why, that's why he changed his name. Giving him a new identity. So he could begin thinking of himself the way that God wanted him to think. See, because he couldn't become what God wanted him to become and do what God wanted him to do with that old name. He had to, see, Abram 
far as I know, this is the first time anybody has ever had the name Abraham. I don't know. But as far as the scriptures, he's the first man that had it. And that name, so to speak, was coined by God. He placed that name upon this man. Listen, he made another man out of this man. Ooh. Ooh, didn't he make another man out of him? He took a dead stump and made a living being out of it. And he ended up becoming the father of 12 nations. My Lord. <laughs> when I look at this universe of ours, I say the universe. When I look at our solar system, when I look at the planets in our solar system, and I think about the Earth. Earth is the number three planet from the sun. And I think, you know, it's no accident that it's the third planet. And when you look at it, it has a different color from all of the others. All of them have a dead appearance. Earth is the only one that has the appearance of life. And you are on this planet because God chose to put you here. He suited you for the earth. And all of these other planets ministers to this one planet called earth. <coughs> Excuse me. Mary, Mercury, Venus, those two planets shields the earth from a direct contact of the radiation that's coming from the sun. If you move those two planets out of place, earth would burn up and everything in it because it would get a direct hit from the radiation of the sun. But God put the sun, God put the earth, made it the third planet, to get the exact amount of heat and radiation from the, from the sun that it needs to produce life. And now we want to go to other planets because things are getting so bad here on the earth. We want to go to other planets and stake us out a claim on, the, on some other planet <laughs> because things are getting out of hand here. But you got to take something from the earth in order to live there. You got an earth suit. Come on, this is an earth suit. Your body is an earth suit. And it's suited for the earth. If you go to Mars, you got to have a Mars suit. And that suit has to be able to contain some of the things that you need from the earth in order to live there. Even on the moon. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this God is demonstrating himself, talking to this man, telling him, I, I have made, listen, he didn't say, I'm going to. Listen, saints, listen to me. God has already, <laughs> God has already finalized your destiny. It's finalized. And he's working, the, he's working you through the process so you can experience what he has done. Yes. Woo! Glory to Jesus. Listen, God had already finalized the outcome of Omicron. COVID-19. He's already finalized it. And he warned us that it was coming. Yeah. Jesus said it was coming. Yeah. And he told us what to do in order to be ready to live through it. But most of us didn't do it. And that's talking about humanity. Most didn't do it. So as a result, how many, how many has died? 900,000.
Thank God many of them, I trust, went to heaven. Amen. I pray many of them went to heaven. Glory to God. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not letting COVID-19, I'm not letting COVID-19 rule me. I'm not going to let it take me out. And that doesn't mean I'm not going to take precautionary measures. That doesn't mean I won't wear a mask. That won't, doesn't mean I won't take the vaccination. It doesn't mean any of that. Listen, because the vaccination is something that was produced from something God made. Amen. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father above. Amen. Medicine is God's gift to man. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Doctors are God's gift to man. Amen. Then when the doctors can't help you, ah, Jesus can. Glory to God. I don't know whether y'all get anything out of this or not. If you don't get something, I'm going home. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus. See, we got to, we, we got to, we, we're in prison or either liberated in our thinking. So in order for God for Abraham and Sarah to become what God wanted them to become, he had to change their identity. He had to change, or shall I say, give them a, a means whereby they could think differently of themselves. And this is one of the reasons why, saints, it behooves us to spend quality time in the word of God. Because this changes your thinking. Amen. This changes the way you think. If you read it, it'll change the way you think. If you'll embrace it, it'll change the way you think about yourself. You begin to think of yourself the way God thinks of you because this is how God thinks of you. Amen. You don't need, so to speak, God to speak to you every morning, every morning with thunder. Amen. Just pick up his word. Hallelujah. Pick up his word. And if you can't read a speck, you can listen to it. It's on CDs and whatnot. Every, almost everywhere you turn, you can find the word of God. Amen. I, I, you can go to the 700 Club, have Bibles, amen, that you can download in your computer, and it'll read it to you. So you can, God has removed all excuses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I met you the Father of a multitude, of many nations. Amen. See, you can't think one way and speak in another unless you are pretending. You're going to speak in reality according to how you're thinking. Now, you can pretend and say things, you know, differently, but you see, your pretense is going to end. And your pretense is not going to produce positive results. The reality of your thinking is going to produce the results that you want or the results that you don't want. If you're not thinking right, you're not thinking correctly, if you're not thinking in line with God, come on. Let's, let's, start, let's, start, let's develop the habit of thinking like God. His scripture says, his word is how high above ours. My thoughts. How high above our thoughts are God's? I got it backward. How high are God's thoughts above ours? As high as the heaven is above the earth. Brother, that's reaching. God's thoughts is higher than ours. And if we're not thinking like God, we're thinking too low. And, and you're going to live. Are you all ready for this? You're going to live in the community of your thoughts. Hear me. You're going to live in the community of your thoughts. This is one of the reasons why Jesus said, 
be careful to take heed how you hear Amen. or what you hear because it's going to influence you. Be careful about who you're listening to. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I hope, I'm, I hope I'm helping somebody today. Glory to Jesus. Let me read Galatians 3, excuse me, uh, if, uh, Galatians 3, 8 again. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. And in your amplified translation, it says, and it expounds on it because they went, the person who wrote the translation, they went to the Hebrew and the Greek to get certain definitions of words. And that's why they expounded on it. Amen. And that's why the, the, the Amplified Version says, in you, all nations shall bless themselves. In other words, all nations shall bless themselves because they have, got, they, have got, they have received the ability to do so because they have received the promise of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is going to teach them, show them what God has done and who they are, what they have, and what they can do as they are directed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And this word in, Gal in, in Galatians 3.8, as we looked at the definition of it in last Sunday's lesson, the word... Uh, in your, in your, in your logia, in lo logia, that's not, I should have brought my computer so I could not repeat it, praise the Lord. But you go home and study that, and you will see the difference between these two words, bless and, and bless. And this word he's using here in Galatians is you blessing yourself. And Dr. 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 Vine Thayer says, the emphasis it's not, um, not focused upon somebody conferring blessings upon you. The emphasis is upon you blessing yourself. And that prefix, that prefix in changes the definition of it. You blessing yourself. Amen. And how do you bless yourself? You bless yourself by embracing what God has said. You confer that upon yourself. God said this about me. Well, this is what it is. And circumstances and feelings and everything surrounding and everything that you might see might be speaking to the contrary. Your feelings, the pain might be telling you, you're healed. And you see, it's difficult many times for people who really don't understand how to stand in faith. It's difficult for them to say, I'm healed when they have pain. Well, I have a pain. Well, so what? God's word is going to change. Hallelujah. God's word is going to change what you feel. When is it going to change it? Inst instantly? I don't know. See, that's where we get tripped up again. We want to change instantly. It might not change instantly. It might be next week. It might be next year. <laughs> Brother Ricky told me my time is up. <laughs> Hallelujah. But how, what are you saying? The, 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 the emphasis is this. What are you saying about yourself? Are you in agreement with God? Amen. Always remember this. It is impossible for God to lie. Amen. 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 Let me say that again. It's imp impossible Amen. for God to lie. If God says I'm healed, if God says I'm blessed, if God says I'm delivered, that's it. Hallelujah. Did you get anything out of this this morning? Amen. You can stand on your feet. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Find out what God is saying. 
and you say the same thing. Amen. 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 Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Uh, Brother Myers, I, I, I trust that when we are canceling service, you're getting the notice. When we cancel service on Sundays, I trust that you're getting the notice. Okay. Somebody's getting the notice to the brother. Amen. Because we don't never know when it's going to have to cancel. Praise the Lord. Amen. Saints, God's blessings rest upon you this morning.